Hey, y'all. I'm Rachel Harris, the Agape Mission President. Good morning, Agape. My name is Minister Peggy Laban. I'm the Vice President of Agape Missionary Society. Good morning, Agape. My name is Cynthia Cohen. I am the Treasurer for Missions. Good morning, Agape. My name is Carol Johnson, and I'm in charge of the card ministry. Hello, Agape. I am Sister Donna Todd. I serve as Chaplain of the Agape Community Church Mission Society, and First Lady Delvita Jackson serves as Co-Chaplain. I'm here to give you some information about the Mission Society. Our purpose is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost, to assist widows, orphans, and other needy individuals, to encourage Christian living. We shall also lead and direct all the missionary efforts, foreign and domestic, of Agape Community Church. Some of the things that we do in our community is we have our annual angel tree for our um, children who have incarcerated parents. You guys have all contributed to it and we thank you. Also, our Deaconess Board members gives out hats, gloves, and scarves for our homeless community to assist them during this cold weather we have up here in the Antelope Valley. We have a senior Christmas dinner and we have a food pantry when members or someone in our community is lacking. They can come to us and we will try to supply their food needs. We also have our Impossible Mission Fund we give for people that have come across a desperate situation, fires, floods, anything that is uh, outside of the norm. We want to assist them and make their situation a little more comfortable. And as the Agape Community Church assisting at the Society of Missions, we provide donations to Doctors Without Borders and uh, St. Jude Hospital. And so we also have this big gathering of Thanksgiving, well, gift cards now because we don't do the baskets anymore. And Agape Community Church as a whole contributes to this effort. And so we are very grateful to be in such a loving and giving church. That is what the Mission Society do. We are here for you. And I'm going to talk to you about Helping Hand. And what hem Helping Hand is, is that we go out as a church and we give sack lunches and toiletries to the homeless. And it is such a blessing for all the help we get from the congregation because you can help out anytime, anywhere, because we always are asking for toothpaste, deodorant, soap, socks, and our homeless need those items. And it's such a blessing that Agape has a mission heart because there are a lot of people out there that are hurting. And I am so proud to say that I belong to Agape because I am part of Helping Hands. Thank you. I send out cards, and sympathy cards, praying for you cards, thinking of you cards, and get well cards. I send them out to all Agape members, or if there's a non-member, I will do that too. So if you would like me to send a card out to a friend of yours or someone you know that's in need of that, uh, contact me, give me their address, or the administration office, and they'll be happy to get the message to me. God bless. I am responsible for letting the Holy Spirit lead me on the scripture that is read at each meeting and also the prayer. And not only for this church, but I'm also responsible for praying for missionaries worldwide, that the Holy Spirit provides their needs and a hedge of protection around them, and just to let uh, the church know how important it is for us as a body to always keep our missionaries in prayer. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a blessing to be a part of such a great mission. So what does missions mean to you here at Agape Community Church? Oh, wow, supporting, supporting all those that needs to be supported in any aspect, any aspect that, that people need help. Everybody, women, men, and youth, come, come join us. us.
Minister Alicia, Minister um, Alicia Chamberlain, and I am going to bring the word this morning. First, I want to give honor to God. Um, I give thanks and praise to my Heavenly Father, who is my all in all, and who has equipped me to even be before you to bring this word. I want to then give honor to Pastor Armando and First Lady McFally, who have um, just allowed me and given me the opportunity to come and bring the word of God this morning. Um, and also, I want to honor my husband and my children, uh, just for Adam Chamberlain, or Deacon Chamberlain, Deacon Trey. For Adam Chamberlain, I just want to honor you and say I love you and thank you for being a support to me um, and then to my children, honoring them for sharing your time um, and space with uh, the members of Agape in the body as I do the work that the Lord has called me to do. And I'd like to pray. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, God. I thank you for calling me, Lord. I trust that you have equipped me to do every good thing that you have sent me out to do, Father. Lord, hide me behind the cross, God, and make yourself known, Father. I glorify you, God. I submit my entire being to you, Father. Lord, have your way in me, God. I pray that the people would, that they would hear you, God, that they would know your heart, Father. Make your heart known to them, Father. I pray that your word will be received, God, and lives will be transformed, God. Fix their thoughts, God. Renew their minds, Father. All of us, God. Fix our thoughts and our minds, Lord. And just help us to take this word, God, and to apply it to our lives moving forward, God. I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I want to, well, for this, uh, for this message, I was given a theme, um, and the theme is service before self. Um, I'm going to be coming from the book of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse 10. So with that in mind, service before self. I'm going to be coming, from, I'm going to be reading first out of the NASB version, and it reads, For God is not unjust, so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name, by having served and still serving the saints. And that's a New American Standard version. So, service to for self. Oh, I had to tarry for that. I know God has a word for his people, and, and this is a word that was worth fighting for. So service before self. First, I want to tell you about this word, service. We just read um, about serving and uh, serving the saints and having served. And I want to let you know that the word service has synonyms. If you look at the other versions, um, the New Living Translation reads care in place of service, for caring for his, his uh, people, for God's people. The New International Version reads help for, for the word service. And then the King James Version, which we all know and love, reads minister. So synonyms of service are care, help, and minister. We'll keep that in mind. What is service? Well, according to the Google Ads, service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. I had to look into this more because there's always something, there's always a, a spiritual meaning in addition to the, the more obvious meaning. So I looked up the word service. And the Greek word ooh, is diakonio. I hope I said that right. It's a verb. It means to serve, minister, actively serve, thoroughly raise up dust by moving in a hurry. This is service. 
in addition to that, so, so that, that word diakonio is to serve or minister. And then we have diakonos, which is a noun, meaning servant or minister. And beyond that, we have diakonia, which is also a noun, and it means service or ministry. What is ministry? It's a sacred service. It's also known as a spirit-empowered service guided by faith. That's what ministry is. So in the effort to understand this word service or help or care or minister, we can see how a servant serves and does a service. We can see how a minister ministers and has a ministry. The root word of all of these, service, serve, servant, the root word is diakon, which means to haste after or pursue. That kind of sounds like thoroughly raise up dust in a hurry. Perhaps this is telling us how we should serve. This doesn't leave room for lazy serving. It doesn't leave room for unenthusiastic serving. It says thoroughly raise up dust by moving in a hurry. It says haste after, pursue. This is an, a key to understanding what true service is. Okay, so now that we have that understanding of what the word service and servant and serve, what that means in the Bible, it's got has intended it to in this scripture, I want to move over to a different translation. And I'll be going back and forth, but primarily we're going to read out of the King James Version. I wanted to use the NASB so you can see the words serve and serving. I wanted us to really see that. But in the King James Version, it says minister. And I'll read it. Hebrews 16 in the King James Version reads, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So now we see the word minister, but know that it means service. It means servant. I want to break this down line by line or piece by piece. So the first part, God is not unrighteous to forget your work. What is he saying there? Well, that first part, God is not unrighteous, it simply means God isn't unjust. Righteous and justice are likened. They're, they're the same word in the Greek. So it means that God isn't unjust. He's not wrong. He's not wicked. It means that God is just. But, we, but if you needed more proof to that, I want to bring you to Psalm Chapter 89, verse 14 in the King James Version. And it reads, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. So I just told you that righteous and just are the same word in the Greek. And we see here that justice and judgment are the habitation of God's throne. Well, there, there's one bit of proof for you that God is just. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it reads, He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. There you go again. God is just. It's repeated throughout scripture, and I just gave you two. So, God is just. He's not unrighteous. He's not unjust. The next part, he's not, God is not unrighteous to forget your work. What is that saying? He will reward you. God won't forget what you have done. He will never let you serve him and, and work for him and ignore your efforts. That's not the character of God. Colossians 3.24 reads, Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. 
And before, going back to 23, Colossians 3, 23, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Now that's a popular verse. We know all that. But it behooves us to look beyond, look to the, the less stated verses. And the next verse reads that the Lord, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. That is proof that you'll be rewarded for serving God. Let me give you another one. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8 reads, we're going to start at, check, we're going to start at verse 6. Not with eye service as man pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. And then eight. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Key thing is that the same shall he receive of the Lord. I'm trying to let you know how God will reward you. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. I'm going to give you one more. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now, this is uh, the parable where uh, they're talking about building a foundation of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, and some will fall, you know, it'll be tested, some will fall, and, and some will be um, left standing. So that's the gist of this parable um, that verse 14 is a part of. But 14 says, he shall receive a reward for the hard work. It takes more work to build a house out of gold than it does to build a house out of hay. And sometimes the proof or the evidence of what God is, is in the evidence of what God isn't. So I want you to turn to Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13. And it reads, and the Lord says, woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work. Now this is when Jeremiah is, God is using Jeremiah to condemn Jehoiakim for his evil works. He had all these servants, they worked hard for him, and he didn't pay them. God is condemning Jehoiakim for, having, for allowing his servants to work with no pay. So God is condemning it. That means that... Uh, he must be against it. God would not condemn himself. So this lets us know that God is a rewarder of those who faithfully work for him, who faithfully serve him. You're never going to go without when you serve the Lord. This isn't giving your tithes. You're never going to go without. This isn't offering, sacrificing your time. You'll never go without time. And if you feel like you are, all you have to do is ask. In Isaiah chapter 65, it, it talks about how God, God is saying how he, he held out his arms to a people all day long who didn't ask for help. So whatever you feel like you'll be lacking by sacrificing whatever it is to serve, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. And most likely, it is a thing in the mind. It's an emotional thing that we feel like we'll be lacking. It's, it's, it's a symptom of distrust. But God is faithful and merciful, and he, he's there to help with even that. So, God is not unrighteous to forget your work. He's not unjust, and he is a rewarder of those who serve him. The next part I want to talk about is, it says, and labor of love which ye have shewed toward his name. So in this part, uh, there are a few things I think I need to be made clear. One is labor of love. I feel like I've heard that before, maybe on TV or something. But today it is a colloquialism, meaning a task done for pleasure, not reward. I think a lot of us can relate to that. 
even the other way around, we can relate. But labor of love is a task done for pleasure, not rewards. That's how it's used today. But I want to look more in depth than that. Labor of love. What is labor? Labor is hard work. If you've ever had a baby, you know. Or for men, if you've ever built a house, it's labor. It's hard work. What is love? Well, in here, in this uh, scripture, love means benevolence, goodwill, good will. Sometimes I type on my phone. Um, I like to think I can do like this and I cannot look. But usually spell check changes my good to God. God will. And I think spell check be on to something because goodwill is God's will. So labor of love. Labor is hard work. Love is benevolence. Goodwill. God's will. How do we know that we are operating in God's will? How do we know that we are actually having goodwill? Because I'm not talking about just works. I'm not talking about just works. I'm talking about how do we know that we are actually operating in goodwill as God intends it? Well, in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it reads, He that loveth not knoweth not God. That was a tongue twister. Let me try that again. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. God is love. And let me take you to Mark chapter 10, verse 18. God is good. So we know God is love and God is good. How do we know? Because when Jesus, when they asked Jesus, when the disciples were speaking to Jesus, he responded to them, why callest thou me good? They were calling him good. And Jesus knew enough to say, there is none good but one. That is God. Jesus knew enough not to call himself good. Do we call ourselves good, absent of Jesus, absent of God? Everything about us that is good is God. I'm not talking about good works. There are people who do a lot of good things. They're mild-mannered, they're kind, they're gentle. People have a, 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 some, some good character traits. They're philanthropists. But unless they have the Spirit of God operating in them, in other words, unless they have believed in Jesus as the Son of God to get the Spirit of God in them, which is the Holy Spirit, then nothing about them is sufficiently good. They're do-gooders. I accept that. You're a do-gooder. People are do-gooders. I was a do-gooder. Sometimes I still am a do-gooder. Well, I can see more times than that. But I'm not just a do-gooder because I believe in Jesus. I have received his free gift of salvation and his comforter resides in me, which is the Holy Spirit. So I know that through Christ Jesus, I'm good. God is love. We saw that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. God is good. We saw that in Mark 10, 18. And so when we're talking about the labor of love, and I ask, well, how do we know that we are operating in the spirit of God and in that goodwill of God? We have to submit. We have to, we have to submit our wills and operate in, which is take on or accept God's will. When we submit our will to God, who is good, will, then we are operating in the goodwill or the love of God. We're fulfilling what this says about labor of love because we've submitted our will and we've done the thing that God wants us to do, which is the true goodwill. Okay, let's move. I want you to know that when it says, and labor of love, which ye have showed, shewed toward his name, 
that when you operate, when you serve like this, because of love or as unto the Lord, which is what it says in Colossians 3.23, it proves your love to, for God. The New Living Translation, I even want to look at that. So in the King James Version, it says, And labor of love which ye have shewed toward his name. And the New Living Translation talks about how, I'm going to read it for you. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. So we see that us showing our love to God is likened to labor of love. That's how we show, that's how we prove that we love God, is when we labor in that love. Okay. And labor of love, which he has shown toward his name. Okay, so we've discussed labor of love. Let's talk about which ye have shown. There's there's so many good components to this one scripture that are worth the time to understand each one. So we, we've uh, gotten an understanding of labor of love, working hard for God's goodwill that might be accomplished. And then you have shewn, King James Version says, which ye have shewn toward his name. That word, the word that is used to, to reference, to explain you have shown is called, well, the word is endicnemi. I hope I read that right. But it's one word, and it basically means to indicate or to prove. So our labor of love, our love for God is proven by our hard work. It's like a, it's like an indicator light. There's, an, there's so many examples of indicator light. I'm going to use a personal one. Just the other day, my indicator light came on in my car. It was shaped like an engine. And it let me know, it was the proof, it was the indicator. That little light was the indicator that something was wrong with my engine. And just like the light, because I couldn't see my engine, but I had a light that, that would let me know what's going on under the hood. And just like that, our acts of service unto God are the indicator light to God that we love him. We're asking all the time, or maybe it's just me, but maybe some other people want to be honest. We're asking all the time, God, show me a sign. Confirm this for me, God. Lord, am I doing this right? Please show me. Let me know. All the time we ask, God, show me. Prove, God. Prove that you're with me. Prove that you told me to do this. God, you want me to talk to this person? Okay, God, give me a sign. But what about what we're proving to God? We're confessing. We're saying, I love you, Lord, all the time. We go and do the things. We go to the houses. We read some of the book. We give some of the time. We do all the things. We touch on a little bit of everything. But God says, prove. God says, prove that you love me. How do we prove? By enduring in the labor of love. Submitting our will to God. Showing him that we love him. Through our hard work as we serve others. So, ye have shown, it means to indicate and prove. Another thing I want you to know about that is, I said when we serve like this, um, as in when we serve out of our love for God, and, and so that we can prove our love for God, when we serve like that, we're talking about our motives and not simply our good works. 
I think I mentioned that a little bit before, but I think it is wor worth clarifying that motives, good motives and good intentions are different. When we serve because we love the Lord, not because we want to get rewarded or get gifts or get seen or, or for prideful reason, when we serve because we love the Lord and we just simply love him, this is an indication of our good motives to God also. Motives are reasons for doing something, which are normally hidden, usually hidden, or reasons for doing something. This is in the heart. This is the heart posture. We can go ahead and say motives equals heart posture. And intentions are the actions that we commit to. So good motives is a good heart posture. And good intentions are simply committing to a certain action. We think it's good. We're committed to it. I don't care who says it's not good. Intention. God wants our motives to be good. That's how he wants us to serve him. So moving on, and the last part of this says, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. How do we serve the Lord? Minister to the saints. What does it mean to minister? Well, serve, help, care for, it's a sacred service. What is God calling you to do? And that's how you minister to the saints. What are you doing it for? We have to make sure that we continue to check that. What are we doing it for? Are you doing it to get rewarded? Are you doing it to get seen? God knows, and it's okay to admit that. We have to, we should confess these things, even though they don't feel good to confess. They don't feel good to admit. God wants us to see ourselves in truth so that we can bring it all to the table. God forbid any of us are thinking that we're doing something but haven't given it the, the reflection to see why we're doing it or what we're doing it for or who we're doing it for. And we close that part off from God because we don't acknowledge it. God said, acknowledge it and bring it to me and I'll help you with that. Serving, ministering, helping others, caring for others. This is all that's meant by service in this text. This is the service that we are called to as servants of God. Isaiah 65, verses 8 through 10. Now, I want to say before I read that, that all of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord, and receive him as our Lord and Savior, we are servants of God. That's who the saints are. Isaiah 65, verses 8 through 10, read in the King James Version. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in a cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountain. And my elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. So who are the servants? Those who believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, the children of God, the saints. This scripture here on verse 10 says, those who have sought God. You're a servant if you're seeking God, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That makes you a servant. Now, as a servant, you are also a minister. Oh, I mean that in a negative way, but I have a confession. It has, you know, with things that I that look to me as so great and unreachable, I sometimes have a little imposter syndrome. Even going to school, I may have gotten a degree and I feel like somehow I'm not worthy of it. 
imposter syndrome. I think a lot of people can relate. So this is something that I have dealt with. And, and particularly in ministry, minister. God, you calling me a minister? But I like to sit right back there in the back with the doors closed. I like that spot. So we can minister there. And I want to tell you, children of God, that you are ministers. It's okay. Say it. Claim it. You are a minister. If you call yourself a servant, if you are striving to serve God, then you are striving to minister. All who believe are called to ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, it says this. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And this is where Paul is talking to, um, telling about, you know, some are given, uh, some are able to teach. God is called teachers and prophets and apostles and the fivefold ministries, people with, uh, various people with giftings and callings. God has called all these people to perfect the saints. Why? So that they can minister. All these people are called so that you, me, we can minister. Regardless of the title. Everyone in here is called to be a minister. It's your reasonable service. God said it's your reasonable service. It's your reasonable ministry. It's the expectation of God. Okay, so now that we know, we're all called to minister and that we have ministered to the saints and do minister. Serving others with the Spirit of God and out of devotion to God is doing the same to God. Okay, let me, let me clarify that a little bit. In Matthew chapter 25, Verse 40, it reads, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of them, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So, you want to serve God. Well, here, God is saying, Serve others. You want to serve me? Serve them. That's what God is saying. Yes, we can consider our service in various um, offices within the body as direct services unto God, but it, but it is, and it's also indirect. It's serving others, it's serving God. Now, I want you to know that. If you are here, I believe you have a desire to serve God, to know God, and here God tells us to serve others in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So uh, I wanted to move through this, uh, this scripture and give some clarity on the component. And before I get to the moving out action, I just want to review what is service the action of helping or doing work for God. It's ministry. Ministry is a sacred service empowered by the Spirit through faith. I want to also remind you that God is not unjust and He will reward you. You can never do anything for God and He not reward you. He's not all forget. He doesn't have to write on a notepad like I do. He remembers everything, big or small, he will reward you when you serve him. And the labor of love, it's hard work. It's hard work. God requires, he's asking for us to work hard so that we can do what is that good and perfect will, that good will of God. I want to remind you also that your service unto others is your service to God. And it should be done not because you are seeking some 
applause or reward. Yes, he's going to reward you, but don't let it be your focus. He will reward you because you didn't expect him or you didn't require him to reward you. That's having a good heart posture. When, when you are doing the thing without expectation, just because God is good and awesome and amazing and loving and kind and merciful and faithful and forgiving. So when you do the thing, not requiring that God do anything else for you, that is serving unto God. That's how God wants us to serve him. Ministering to the saints. Help them. Help others. Care for others. Exert goodwill, God's will, to others. Minister to others. You want to minister. Minister to them. Serve them. How do you minister? It's not just talking. It's also helping. It's also caring for them. And in that, you're showing love to God and to them. And so I want to leave with this, and I want to move from move forward in this because I think what what is said after verse ten is also important. And for this, I'm going to read. I'm going to start back on ten, and I'm going to go through twelve. I'm going to read from the King James version. So we studied this. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work of, and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. But also important is what comes after. And I'm going to I'm going to take this and make it my own because this is my prayer for you, as it was Paul's for the church. And I desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Keep going. There's a lot of good things happening out there. There's a lot of good things happening here. God is working. He's on the move. You know, with our, uh, we have various ministries here that are just enthusiastic and working hard the food ministry that that has been on fire for the last couple of months it's a good service and I want to say keep going it's good it's good and godly what you're doing you already know that but I want to reaffirm you keep going keep serving and serve more and for those who maybe uh, have not enthusiastically or have rushed to pursue this thing called service, start somewhere. Start with your next door neighbor, in your home. Start. I want to tell you to change your mind about service. Don't moan and groan. It's not like we're going to work. We go to work for money. We go to work some of us, we like doing it. But service unto God is sacred. So change your mind about service. Because God will use that job. God will use that school. Wherever you're, you're working, wherever you're putting your hands to, God can use it. But you got to submit your will to his. And say, God, I want to serve. I want whatever is your good will. I want your good will to have its full effect in my life. God, use this. Use that. God can use anything, so allow him into your life so that he can transform you by the renewing of your mind. And lastly, I want to say, be inspired. That's what 11 through 12, that's what it's saying. 12 says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience, and patience inherit the promises. And the New Living Translation says, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. So I want to tell you to keep going, endure, do more. I want, you to, I want to tell you to change your mind about service and for others to start. And I also want to say, be inspired. 
Look around and see how God is at work. Be inspired by others. Don't be jealous. Don't say, oh, I wish I could do it like that person. Oh, if I can't do it like that, then I can't do it at all. No, be inspired. And then after you've sat and been inspired, I want you to aspire to do the same thing. Inspire is us standing in awe. Oh, wow, look at all this. Look at all these people serving. Look how they're doing this. Look what God is doing. Aspiring is, okay, now I'm doing it. It's actionable. Aspire to do the same thing. Jesus says as much in Luke chapter 10, verse 37. I want to read the last part of that. It says, yes, now go and do the same. And I want to share this, uh, this last story um, with you, uh, a personal experience. It was a few weeks ago, I was serving, um, as I do sometimes. Uh, I was serving in the house of God, and this was after church, after service, and it was the act of God. So people were coming up for prayer. Um, the spirit was really moving. The spirit was flowing in this place. It was quiet. Most of the people had exited. But I was here, and as an usher, I'm supposed to, to help people. I'm supposed what you need tissue, I'm giving you tissue, I'm giving you a prayer cloth. You're supposed to look out for the people and give them what they need in that time. So I think I was I was one of the, the only ushers here at that, that particular time. We do have an amazing usher board. But at that particular time, I was the only one here after church. And so many things were happening in the spirit. I was stunned. I was in awe. I was inspired. God was moving, and then there's another servant in the house, and I won't say any names, but they may or not, may not be a deacon. But there's another servant in the house who was, while I was sitting there, I was just amazed and, and dumbfounded by the awe of God. This servant was running circles around everyone, running circles, not literally running circles, but he was so hard at work, doing everything that I was supposed to be doing, and then some. And at first, initially, I'm gonna be honest, I was like, ooh, I'm jelly, maybe I, I should be doing, I'm not living up to what I'm supposed to be doing. And it was a split second, <laughs> thought crossed my mind. And at the, in the following second, and this took over the initial thought, I was inspired by how this one person took care of everyone in here. Everybody, he took care of everything. Tissues, prayer cloths, looking out for everyone. One person serving like that, serving so hard, not expecting a reward. I was inspired. And I wanna encourage you that when you see such things, don't compare yourself. And I know we are, we are our, our feelings are fickle, we're humans, but don't stay there. Be inspired and, and be driven to do the same. After that, I was, oh, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be doing all that. God, help me to serve like that. Whatever way you want me to serve, God. But wow, that was amazing how that person did all that. And so... It is my prayer that we all do the same, that we don't just be an audience to the works of God, but be, that we be participants in the works of God, that we actively pursue service. I want to say this prayer for all of us. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you. Lord, I bless your holy name, God. God, I thank you, Lord. You're wonderful in all your ways, God. Everything good about us is from you. We acknowledge it, God. We acknowledge your touch, your voice in this word, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you will penetrate, Lord, 
to the very core of the heart, God, and that you would help us, Lord, to, to not be stuck, Lord, in our ways, Lord, to not be prone to comparisons, God, but help us to, to consider you, Lord, to serve you, God, just as you help ask us to serve you, God. Help us to be willing, God. Help us to be looking for ways on how, of how we can serve God. We know now, God, that our service unto you is our demonstration of love, God. And we want to prove that love to you, God. So help us, Lord. Help us, God, to get out of our own way and to serve you, God, in spirit and in truth all the time. We thank you, God, that we will not grow weary, God, but that that you will give us, Lord, the endurance, God, the strength, Lord, the stick to itiveness that we need, Lord, to keep going, God, to be enthusiastic about our service unto you, God, to be sensitive and compassionate to others, Lord, to lend a listening ear, God, to lend a helping hand, Father. Lord, we fix our thoughts on you, God. We commit our entire beings to you, Father. Help us to show others love, God, because we know, Lord, you said love others and love God, and you're calling us to serve God. And you let us know that it is how we can, it is a demonstration of our love for others, how we can love others, how we can love you, God, by serving God. So let us gladly accept, we gladly accept the call to service God. And we thank you, Lord. May it be glorifying to you, God. May it be edifying to the body, God. And we ask that you would commit this, this word to our spirits, God. Let our members remember it, God. Let our hands work hard and diligently and persistently, Lord, and maliciously, God, that your will may be done in us and through us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check the description box below for all the special announcements that we made and also for information on how to tithe and give. Once again, we love you with agape love. We can't love you unless Jesus Christ loves you through us. Stay safe and have a blessed week.